Welcome to Midstream Methodist Church, where we build a Christ-like community. We hope you enjoy our online sermon. Good morning everybody and welcome to our service of worship today. To all the dads out there, happy Father's Day. We celebrate you. For those of us who can see our dads today, have fun. For those who are far away, make sure you contact them and just spend some special time with them. We are going to open our service in prayer this morning. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that we can come here this morning knowing that you are right here with us. Thank you, Lord, that you are our Father. You are the one who looks after us and the one who brings us closer to you every day. Lord Jesus, as we come to worship you this morning, we thank you for everything you've done for us. Amen. Please join us now as we sing our first song.
to worship this morning comes from Psalm 37, the first nine verses. It's a Psalm of David. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger, and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. What a beautiful psalm to start this morning. Please join me as we now pray for others in our community. Father God, thank you that we can come before you this morning, worshiping your name, and knowing that you hear our cries of worship to you. Lord, today we bring you our church family, and Lord, we bring you Gay and Sandy, who will both have operations in the next week. And Father, we bring you Jean Trollope and her family too, having lost her dad. Lord Jesus, we bring you our church. We know that as we meet here today, as we meet online and over screens, that you are part of each one of our lives. Lord, bring us closer to each other in the days that follow, as we have been close in the past. Lord, please be with our church leaders, both here in Midstream and in the whole country, Lord. Please be with the Methodist Church in this country and help us still to keep bringing people closer to you each day, regardless of the challenges. Father, we pray for the community that we live in. We pray for Midstream and Centurion, Lord, we know that there are many out here who are struggling. We know that many of our friends and family have had to forego income, Lord, who have gone hungry. Lord, we know that it's cold and there are those on our streets who have no warm place. Father, help us in this community to be your hands and your feet every day. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our country. We pray for our president. Father God, draw them close to you. Help them to hear your word as they make decisions every day. Lord Jesus, we bring you our own families, those who are close and those who are far. We give you special thanks today, Lord, for our fathers, for the men in our community who lead their homes and their families and are men of God. And Lord, we just thank you that we can spend some time with them today. We bring you our children, Lord, who face going back to school and who face learning under weird and wonderful circumstances, Father. We just pray that you will be with them and restore what has been lost in these past days. And Lord, finally, we bring you ourselves. We know that each one of us here, Lord, has sinned. We know that we have done things that hurt you and hurt those around us. And Father, for that we are sorry. We confess our sins to you today, Lord, knowing that we 
can't make up for it ourselves. And so we come to you and we ask you, Father, please forgive us. And Jesus, we thank you that you did that work on the cross for us, that we may have that forgiveness today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you forgive our sins and give us the freedom that we can walk away this morning with the freedom you've brought to us this morning. And Lord, as we come before you today and every other day, we pray that you will use that which we give to you. Lord, use our time that we can honor you. Use our talents that we can bring others closer to you. And Lord, we pray too that if we are able, you will use the money that we bring to your church to do good in this community, Lord, so that more people will come to know you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So today we are going to be looking at a passage that has to do with patience. Now patience is not one of my strong suits. Absolutely not one of my strong points. But God is teaching me and he's teaching me every day. And there's that lovely saying that God doesn't give you patience. He gives you opportunities to learn patience. Well, he's been giving me plenty of opportunities to learn that patience in the last while. Like my laptop that packed up halfway through typing the sermon. So I now have a bit of a sore hand from having to write again. It's something I haven't done for many years. So maybe God is teaching me very clearly that patience is what is needed. There are many passages about patience in the Bible. Google tells me that there are 70 times when patience is discussed and mentioned in the Bible. So I think perhaps God knew, and he knows today, that we were going to battle with this actual patience, especially in the world we live in right now. My kids think it's crazy that in the old days we had to wait an entire week to see the next episode of a television program and then wait a whole nother year for the next season to come out. Today we can sit and binge watch 10 seasons of Friends in a long weekend and we've lived through 10 years of what took us in the old days 10 years to watch. Writing letters seems like a bit of a lost art. And the kids still learn how to lay out and write letters in their English classes at school. But maybe they should, prob they should master a well-thought-out email instead. Or how to speak clearly on a Zoom meeting. Those might be skills they can actually use. There are some great examples of patience in the Bible. God told Abraham and Sarah that they would have a baby. And then they waited for 25 years. That's a lot of patience to wait for 25 years. The Israelites took 40 years to get to the promised land. 40 years is a lifetime for many of us. And it's a long time to wait. And yet they carried on because they had patience. And they trusted that God knew what he was doing. And here I am getting irritated if I have to wait 20 minutes for a pizza. They waited for years and years and years. Friends, we've been working through the book of James for the last two weeks. So let's see what we can learn from the scriptures today. Our first reading comes from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 to 12. And it's entitled, Patience in Suffering. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. And above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or earth or anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. 
Again, James doesn't mince his words, and he tells us very clearly what is expected of us. He says, firstly, be patient until the Lord's coming. That's a lot of patience. It's been a couple of thousand years, and we're still being patient. But he tells us to keep on being patient. And he speaks here of the farmer who waits for the spring and the autumn rains, waiting for the seasons to pass. In this COVID season of lockdown, of rising numbers of infections, of financial instability, of food insecurity, we don't feel very patient. How many sentences start when this is all over and we can go back to what we need to do? When this is all over and I can see the people I love every day, after all of this has happened, we are going to go back. Those are the, th the statements we use all the time. They are not very patient statements. We are waiting impatiently for this to end. And yet here we are, unable to do much else but wait and hope and pray. The concept of patience during suffering doesn't really make sense. If we are suffering, which many of us are at this point, we want it to stop as soon as possible. Nobody sort of gets comfortable and says, it's okay, I'm happy with the suffering, let's just ride it out for a while. We want it to be over. There's an urgency that we want the suffering to end. We really don't want to learn about patience right now. And then James, who, who knew the human spirit, warns us not to grumble against one another. How many of us has grum have grumbled at the people we share a home with? I know I have, and I know those in my home have grumbled with me more than once. How many of us have snapped at those that we are quarantined and locked down with and sometimes feel a little bit trapped? Because, friends, we're not being patient at this time. We're kind of just treading water and biding our time and hoping it ends soon. I know that I've complained a lot. I've grumbled a lot. I've missed my friends. I've missed spending time with those that I love. But today, Lord, friends, God is telling us we need to have patience. Patience in a time of suffering. We spoke last week about perseverance, and today James mentions it again. In the context of Job, now if you've ever read, read the book Job, you will know that suffering and perseverance are abundant. He suffered for years. He lost everything, and he persevered because of his relationship with God. We don't see huge evidence of patience when we read that book. We see a lot of suffering. We also see a lot of perseverance. But where was patience hiding in that story? I think here James is emphasizing that if we work on our relationships with those around us, where we use the simple yes or no and not a million words and reasons and and swear by this and swear by that, then when we speak to each other, we bring honesty, and honesty brings patience. These are good guidelines for any relationships, friend. Don't Your yes must be yes, and your no must be no. You don't have to prove that it's going to be yes. You don't have to put your hand on a stack of Bibles or pinky promise or, or swear on your mother's grave or whatever it was that we used to do as children to try and convince people we were telling the truth. Your relationships should speak for themselves. When you say yes, it is yes. And when you say no, it is no. So then, friends, can we be patient in these times? Is it possible? I'm not sure if we all think that we can. Can we endure a little longer? Maybe even a lot longer. That with God, we know we can. The good news is when we're with the Holy Spirit, we can do even better than we are doing now. Our second reading comes from the book of Galatians, and it is entitled Life by the Spirit. Galatians 5, verse 13 to 26. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out. 
or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discourse, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. What beautiful words from the scripture in Galatians. If we start to look outward and not inward, we will serve one another. And by doing so, we may well shift our focus a little at this time. When we draw close to Jesus, his Holy Spirit changes us. You cannot be close to God and not change because of who he is. He moves in our hearts and our minds away from where we are. He moves us to a place that the world is dragging us to and says, come, follow me rather. That lovely list of all the horrible things that we do as acts of the flesh reads a little bit like a soap opera, and yet many of these things creep into our lives every day. And so when we are called by the Spirit, we are called to follow that which God has intended for us. And like a fruit tree, we will bear the fruit that we are designed and created to bear. You won't get apples from an orange tree. And so if you are not in connection with God all the time, then you will not easily bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When we grow closer to Christ, we become more like him. We also become more like that which we were designed and created to be. We were not created to be that person who takes part in all of those horrible actions that are mentioned in the reading. We were created to be the person that bears the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And as our relationship begins to change with Jesus, it changes who we are too. We don't each get one or two fruits like the gifts of the Spirit, but we all grow in all of these areas of our lives as we're in relationship with Jesus. But friends, as you and I both know, we all grow at different speeds in different areas, but we're ultimately going to grow in all of these areas together. And lucky for us, patience is on that list. And so if we're in relationship with Jesus, we know that our patience will increase. We can't go through life as a Christ follower saying, well, I'm impatient, that's just the way I am, live with it. Or I'm really not good with self-control, so that's just the way it's going to be. No, friends. As we grow closer to Christ, we bear more of his fruit, which includes patience and self-control. We need to grow and to change daily as we grow closer to Christ himself. In our last reading for today, from Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 6, we have another look at what patience might be. Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 6. And this is entitled, Unity and Maturity in the Body of Christ. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body 
and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over and through all and in all. Paul urges us to take seriously our role as Christ followers here on earth. He teaches us to be humble. Be humble with each other, putting others before yourself. And be humble with God, coming before him and being open and honest and saying, Lord, I've really missed, messed up and I need your help. He will help us. He will listen and he won't condemn us. He comes to bring us freedom after all. Be gentle with each other. This is not a time to be very prickly with those around you. This is a time to be gentle and care for those that you come into contact with. And then, friends, it's a time where we can be gentle with ourselves. Let's not expect perfection right now, understanding that we're all going through a time of, of stress, a time of difference, a time of lockdown, a time of uncertainty. Be gentle with yourself, friends. And then be patient. Be patient with each other. Be patient with the patience that comes from Christ. Be patient in a society where patience is not valued. Be patient with those around you. And then be patient with God. Sometimes we have a prayer request and we have a time limit on it for him. But remember, when we are patient, good things will come in God's good time. And then I urge you again to look after yourselves. Be patient with yourself. Give yourself a break. Give yourself a bit of slack. If you mess up, deal with it, get over it, and start again. We are not here to condemn ourselves and to expect perfection either. So be patient with yourself. He reminds us here that it is the one body of Christ of which we are all part. One spirit, one hope, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all. In this huge, big, mixed-up world that we live in, we belong to this body. This is where we fit in, brothers and sisters. We belong to the Spirit. We share it with those other Christ followers we come into contact with. We are part of the hope of the world, which is Jesus Christ. We are part of the faith in Jesus and we are blessed by the one baptism. And then, friends, on Father's Day today, let's always remember that we are the children of the one God and Father of us all. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that you want us to learn patience. Thank you, Lord, that you are willing to teach us. Thank you, Lord, that you are patient with each one of us every day. And Lord, as we navigate the next week, we know that you are right there with us. Help us, Lord, to just think about how we can be more patient with those around us. Lord, draw us closer to you, closer to your Spirit, that we may indeed grow in the different fruits of the Spirit that draw us closer to you. And Lord, as we go into the day remembering our dads, remembering those who are with us and those who aren't anymore, we thank you so much that you indeed are our Lord and Father of all. Amen. <laughs>